This week on Barbell Shrugged, we're at the Southeastern Regionals for the CrossFit 2013 series. Matt Baird and Travis Mayer get physical while Shayna Albertson cooks. Spaghetti and the music, the morning, that, that you better never somewhere. let it go, go, you ain't got one shot, do not miss your chance to blow, this opportunity comes once in a lifetime, oh, oh, <laughs> all right, I'm that's, Mike Bletso here with, in the CTP cam. with uh, Doug Larson, uh, we're hanging out at the Southeast Regional for the CrossFit Games, with new up and coming rapper, Tra- Travis, Travis Mayer, Mayer. <laughs> was that on, was what's that up, on, like, what's up, <laughs> was that on camera, you caught that earlier? He got it. He, well, he's I, nodding. I, I was recording over here, so we at least captured the audio. Yes. Beautiful. Um, you, you caught that whole rap? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. You're going to be famous. <laughs> uh, Travis is here to compete. Um, he is from in the Atlanta area. Woodstock, Georgia. Woodstock, Georgia. Uh, head coach at CrossFit Silos. Correct. And uh, you won third place at the OC Throwdown. I didn't win third place. I well. took third place. Winning would be yeah, first, that's winning. Right? You won third place. <laughs> this is how I make people feel better about third place. That's right. <laughs> you won third place. I did. I, I did, did win it. third I, place. You I won. Place. I won something. <laughs> I did it. Which yeah. actually is a really big deal. A lot of people probably don't even know what the OC Throwdown is if they if they aren't in uh, that region of the United States or if they're you know not in the United States. Maybe yeah. maybe talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, yeah, like that's a big competition. Yeah. So you had a qualifier online that was three weeks long. That you had a place i think it was top 30 and then was the pro division then they had top 30 in the amateur division but pretty much invited 60 athletes out so that was big first competition coming back after fracturing my l5 so went out there uh try to see how i held up against some of the top games athletes and Cause half those guys were basically games athletes yeah there's probably about 15 I yeah there's a big um what's it called <laughs> qualifying uh well, not big showdown. Qual- yeah, there's a, you had to qualify to go there. Yeah, basically, and yeah, it's not just an anybody competition. Yeah, I think there was like 700 something men uh, tried to qualify, and they only let in the top 60. Well, Sorry that makes me feel better. Yeah, so just qualifying is a pretty big deal. And he won third place. <laughs> <laughs> Winning makes you feel even better. I did. I did win. <laughs> uh, real quick, uh, before we get too deep in this conversation, we'll talk about how you fractured your back. Fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. Um, great story. Uh, <laughs> Teaser. Make sure that you go to barbellshrug.com and sign up for the newsletter. That way we'll be able to update you on all the stuff we're doing. We're not very good at mentioning on the podcast, if you've noticed, uh, because we're always talking about different stuff. Uh, and I'm a little scatterbrained. But and, and you could be watching this in the future. And all the stuff that the we talk about is over. Yes, you can right. hear about all my raps. That's yeah, right, on the podcast, that's right. upcoming album coming out soon. <laughs> we'll be posting it. If, it, if, uh, <laughs> if Travis doesn't make it to the game, he's he's gonna I'm make an album. It. Yeah. If you're an iTunes listener only, you may not be aware that we also have something called the Daily BS uh, on the website. If you click on the Daily BS, that's where we have really short YouTube videos, eh, two to five minutes in length, where we answer the questions that people submit. So a lot of people send us questions. We really don't have the opportunity to answer them on the show. So what we do is we just, it's real quick and to the point. If you don't have time to listen to an hour-long show, but you want to learn something, uh, I think we're, what, close to 100? Just li- sure we're like 140 right now or something like that. 140 quick answers. So mm-hmm. um, That's quick. Yeah. <laughs> it's pure content. So yeah, if you're it, a person that likes to just get quick answers, it's perfect. Yeah, if you want to cut through the BS of, of Barbell Shrug, which that's half the show, and want to just get pure content, just go to those YouTube videos. Seriously. Um, and then we also have Technique Watt on there, so check that out. Those are some videos just on technique. It's not just a demonstration. It's also an explanation. All right. All right, let's get back to Travis. I should have that in my rap. It's not a demonstration. It's an explanation. Boom. I gave you that. <laughs> you owe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll call when that you the ma- blood, when you, get, so. when you get famous, yeah. Your first CrossFit rap. That'll be in there. The blood, so. <laughs> what what <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh last year uh first week of the open 
Um, it, and you actually came to the faction games. Uh, the last time we did faction games was yep. 2011. Yeah, did you win the faction games? I did. You showed yeah. up and cleaned house. That wasn't your what, most what? notable accomplishment. It was OC Throwdown being <laughs> faction games in Tennessee. It was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, that was the last time we had faction games. Came in, cleaned house. Um, that was that was cool. Awesome um, event, by the way. Thank you. And uh, then you did the open, and then uh, you, I attempted the open. You attempted <laughs> to do the open. You probably did pretty good the first week, and then you uh, fractured your L5. Correct. Uh, so. It's embarrassing talking about it, but actually started, thought I did it Olympic lifting, snatching, when I stepped off the platform, and then pretty much fell to the ground. But later come found, find out, and girlfriend was like, hey, you remember when you were at your brother's wedding, and you went jumping from your back to your feet, and you slipped, and then fell straight on your back, and you were in instant pain? <laughs> that might have been it. That might have been what <laughs> really actually caused it. So, oh. dancing. Rapping and dancing. So, it know. was not Olympic lifting that hurt, hurt your back. It was some other it crazy added, bullshit. It added to it, side, but it was yeah. probably more the dancing, yeah. Yeah, more the dancing. But dancing does hurt. Lesson learned. I guess I'm going to stop my my dance offs that I have on the weekends. You should stop. <laughs> it's not good for you. So you fractured your L5 vertebra, which yep. is the largest vertebra in, in your lower, lower back. back. Yep. Right before, like right before your hips start, the, the lowest one, the biggest exactly. one. Exactly. Right close to that nice, beautiful SI joint. Okay, so how did you uh, manage that? I mean, how did you manage like coming back from that? What was the process there? Uh, pretty much got went to the orthopedic, and he was like, you can attempt to keep working out. So I tried, Yeah. and it was miserable. So went got a quarter zone shot and attempted to do a couple more weeks of the open, and it just was not going where I wanted it to. Yeah. So then realized I should just pull out and say quitsies to that. And Porn then <laughs> took about eight weeks off of absolutely nothing except just complete rest and then did some PT stuff. Mm -hmm. And then so now you, I'm you back. You put in a back brace then? Nope. Look out. Slight, ver slight fracture. Yeah. Nothing severe. Yeah. So it healed up in, in two, three months? Yeah, enough, roughly. Enough to start training semi-normal yeah. again? Yep. And then I remember the first day I came back, I actually hit a PR on back squat. So I was excited. Damn. You know, I don't rest. Know if a good idea or not, but good job. <laughs> I know. I it's wanted like first day back. Let's max out. <laughs> it felt good. So I've like, maxed go in months. <laughs> Your back is broken. <laughs> well, go. I know, but I feel rested. You know what's funny is you know we, I say you know there's no such thing as overtraining, just under recovery. But there's been several times with with me as well where I'll take off like a month or two from squatting at all due to a, you know a knee injury or a hamstring issue or something like that, and then I'll do just jumps. Uh, or pools or something like that. Come back, and then you hit a PR right off the bat. And that's Yo, what's up? Oh shit! <laughs> Special There's guest in the house. He is in the Matt house. Matt Baird. Oh, no. He's home with his bright hey, orange Southeast shirt on. It is a bright shirt. <laughs> a he, very bright oh, shirt. Oh, he brought he, me a coffee. You Dude, went to Dunkin' Donuts. A sweetheart. Were you, crush, you? were you crushing Dunkin' Donuts? Take it off. Take to get it off. <laughs> oh god, it's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> you look massive, <laughs> by the way. So Matt Baird, you know, on the show, and uh, the future's the future Mrs. Baird just yep. just arrived. Taylor Flynn. How you doing? All right. Good, you. Sweet beard, dude. Uh, hop on, dude. He's got to get his vitamin D for recovery. That's shit. That's all right. Hop hop on the seat there. I don't know if I can handle that. You see how he just he just walked in. Like I didn't even invite him to. You know, I'm like I was like kind of get in here. and He's like putting on the headphones like I'm, I'm doing podcast <laughs> I thought you're here to swim this is Travis's show yeah yeah get Quick out of here over. <laughs> he's gonna go inside and pouting is he pouting no he's is, he, is he a powder so he's you, getting deodorant so, uh, yeah he pouts sometimes he stinks a lot a of times like you know you take a break and you end up coming back even stronger I so, guess that three months dude well, yeah, I think I think if you train hard year after year after year, there's probably a good idea every once in a while just take a whole month off from uh, from something like that, you know. Rest does you good. It's, it's Everybody amazing. should have rest. So whoever's yeah. listening to this, you should rest. <laughs> no, go, go rest. No, right no, now. no. Here's here's the truth. Rest. Most of you don't need to rest at all. Yeah. Most of you are not <laughs> overtraining. <laughs> I promise. If you're showing up and wadding for an hour, three, four, five times a week. You're, you're probably pretty well rested. If you're, if you're on your rest time, come up with an album. How, yeah. How many sessions a week were you doing leading up to Travis to regionals? Like the last three or four like, weeks. How like many sessions this, per week? Like this. this yeah, week? yeah. Maybe not this week because you're probably tapered back. But 
But like uh, three or four weeks ago, how many sessions per week were you doing? You doing two uh, days? Multiple yeah, days two a week? days, and then I would end up doing probably six to eight workouts in a weekend. Mm-hmm. And then just, just, on the, just on the weekend? Just the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. It I don't even six. get that many sessions in an entire week. So six to eight hey. on Saturday and Sunday. Yep. And then how many during the week? Then oh. Monday, Thursday off. And Scoot then, up. Let's go, Matt. Come on. Monday, Thursday off? Okay. Yeah. I'm just and then, listening. I just want to listen. Just sit and listen for now. <laughs> that was like, the, that was like <laughs> the softest I've ever heard you speak. You're like, I just want to listen. I'm just going to listen. Is that listen. okay with you guys? I just want to listen. So six to All eight right, sessions so over the weekend. Yep. And then one or two, probably two or three. Between Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh-huh. And then back at it, coming in to regional. Sweet. Thanks I'm to bad Max. How many, how many sessions was that? Good God. Uh, God. Could be like 12. Okay, so 12 sessions per week. 12 seems to be like so the, that, for any that athlete. Probably, that's two days, most days of the week, really. Yeah. yeah. Mixed with the sum on the weekend, it's, yeah. It's funny because like, uh, like if you look at like the most elite weightlifters and stuff like that, like the max sessions they're going to see is about 12 as well. So He's not talking about you, Matt. Matt did like Other 18. Other weightlifters. Matt worked out like 18 not, times Not Matt lifters. Not <laughs> lactate Matt batteries. <laughs> lactate Matt battery. That, that's hamstring ha- intelligence. Hashtag. You, you came up with any new terms lately, dude? <laughs> hamstring intelligence. Hashtag that's right, Matt hamstring battery. intelligence. <laughs> All right, so Travis is coached by Max with uh, OPT. Great guy. Awesome He, he guy. is a great guy. Solid dude. Uh, yeah. Got he to is have fantastic. dinner with him a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Maybe we'll try to get him on the show this weekend. And then Matt Barrett is with CJ Martin. I am. Represent. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna Let's let you guys. Up. You guys need to shit talk each other now. Go, <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> you know, Fist fight right now. You know, it's so funny. Is um, get closer to Mike, Matt. The only the get closer to Mike. Your no, your nose should be touching. It's like he doesn't your nose should literally the be touching. The difference, about, <laughs> the, the, difference, <laughs> the difference in our sport is that, dude. I really don't think anyone shits talks anyone. Uh, I'll be, I'll be, uh, except no, me and Matt Bear. We're starting. It's about, I, I, like, it's about I, I, starting I, a trend, bro. Well, Travis, I, I, Travis is like, don't check my Facebook. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> Travis I mean, been shit talking you all week. And you didn't even see it. Well, he's, got, his blog, he's got me blocked. Blog. He's got it's me like, blocked. He's just <laughs> talking shit. Well, dude, no, I'm serious. So it's like nobody does. You it. get down. You get down, right? And I mean, obviously, everyone's a competitor, right? Like, 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 I want to beat Travis. He wants to beat me. But like, it's not like. It's not like I'm fucking here like a prize fight being like, oh, I can't sit next to this fucking yeah. guy. You know what I mean? Who is it's this like, guy? Who, it doesn't matter, man. You know, yeah, I do. I want to beat Travis just as much as I want to beat the guy that I train with every single day. You know, and Zach, and Zach Anderson. It's just, dude, it's just Zom. the, it's the yeah. nature It's the nature of the freaking sport. There's, there's 48 guys the and there's three spots. <laughs> you just go as fast as you can. The what? chips fall where they may. What? Yeah. I sat yeah. next to Zaw. I'm calling him Zaw. He's a fucking freak, dude. He is a freak. He, it's like we, got, we got on the plane. What was he eating? Was he eating McDonald's? He wasn't eating on was the he plane. Eating McDonald's? No, no he ate. Uh, he, Oreo balls. I, well, you know what's <laughs> funny is, <laughs> I don't know if I should tell everybody this or not. But uh, you, you probably should say it. You should I was, say it. I was sitting on the plane and I had the pretzels. And uh, dude, it's because oh no, you what? If he wasn't you in that one ounce bag of pretzels I, they gave I, you on the plane, I ate the Delta pretzels. You're oh, so no. plain. I admit nope. it. The if whole he, the whole time I was like, oh no, your weekend, your, your, your weekend probably went crazy. Dude, if he wasn't eating, if he wasn't eating, he had just he had just eaten something atrocious. Like like fucking the guy next to you on the plane. Yeah, yeah. So I ate my pretzels. I was like, I wonder. Because he, he hops on. He's got the Reebok Nanos. He's he's ginormous. He's official. He's yeah. a fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's wearing fucking, the unbroken t-shirt. Oh, he's t-shirt. massive. He's, he's a wearing fucking unbro- monster yeah. human. Yeah. That, that guy's a crossfitter for sure. Yeah. So he gets They're on. easy to spot the, in the airport. He texts me. He was like, hey, what's that guy who, who's on uh, who's on Barbell Shrugged? And I was like, which one? You know, he's like, the dude with the blonde hair. And I was like, oh, Mike. Little, he's like a little smaller. <laughs> but, uh, he didn't say that. I was not talking shit. <laughs> Unbelievable. I can't believe he didn't just recognize you right off the bat. With I the know. Fuck. I know. You got like 70 likes and everything on this. <laughs> At least. Four digit Twitter followers. I've got friends. Yeah. People yeah. know me. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he, uh, it's funny. It's Shana Alverson. Ended up sitting right in front of us on the plane. It was yeah. like we were all grouped together. We, we took up like two rows. Where did CTP sit? Where was he? he? Where was Doug he and CTP were right, right next to me. Was he, was he mile high in with one of the stewardesses? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. He's like, I hadn't thought about that. I yeah. should have been. He, it was, uh, she was about 200 pounds. But <laughs> yeah. they, made it, they made it work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They got yeah. some extra pretzels going on. I was on. talking to somebody about that the other day. They said they, oh, yeah, I won't, I won't tell who it is, but... They said they were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to totally do the mile high. And then 
he figured out the mile high really doesn't exist because they got in the bathroom and it was just like you couldn't even move. You I can barely, like, I can barely shit in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not big. I'm just I'm I believe it. I'm just uncomfortable. I feel like you could make it work if you wanted to. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not the 200 pound stewardess, but you could do it. Look at Doug. He's like, you could make I'm it. Like, I'm like, physics, I'm, it physics, physics, it physics ha- says <laughs> it could work. You got, you got to, you got to go in, in the right direction. I thought this out. Have you tried Whoa. this? Whoa. <laughs> I've not tried. I really want to. It's though. Aggressive. I think my older brother's gotten close though. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing is like I don't know anyone who's done it. They talk about doing it or they tried it or you know they always get they always get thwarted. Maybe that somehow. should be the next podcast: finding someone that has. So what is the uh, yeah, what that's is right. what, What's your most notable accomplishment? <laughs> what is the top? Hey, I banged a girl on a is, the flight. <laughs> if somebody if somebody really pulled that off in the bathroom of a commercial airliner, please tweet me at Michael Bledsoe. <laughs> <laughs> tweet it to me and we'll figure this out. Especially we will get you female. on the podcast. Especially if you're married Mike and wants you to know you. with your wife. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the, I kind of barged in, what was the topic of today's show? What was My the, rapping you, skills. Oh, Tra- yeah. Of Travis's rapping? show, you mean? <laughs> yeah, Travis's show. Are you a lyricist? <laughs> This dude, he, he, he kicked us he off was with rapping a rap. when we started. We start, we start off with Eminem. Uh, you, oh my uh, god! <laughs> you rap a little bit too. Well, we listen, battling. Listen, listen, listen. Rap listen. battle. I don't right. know if I'm comfortable enough to just let it go over, over. You know, you got to do it now, dude. I can't handle it. I'll freak out. <laughs> this is your jam, dude. About, you need about, pressure. You, I've, you I've operate got, really well under well pressure. I've, you know, dude. Listen, I, I thought Travis was Eminem, but I think you're Eminem. Be as it may, be as it may, I've got a lot going on in my mind right now, and I'm bound to come out with something gay or something. You know, like talk. About touching the penis or something. Like that. I don't know, but it, it I, just freaks I'm out. I'm scared to rap right now. <laughs> I feel like I just got some insight into how you think. Little, 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 little Freudian slip. Little Freudian slip. Anytime, yeah. anytime. He, Shout out to my gays. Anytime, <laughs> he gets, anytime he gets nervous, he just goes gay. Yeah. How do you feel about that? <laughs> what happens. does that mean? That's how do you feel about that, Taylor? That's what Future happens. Mrs. Baird. That's what happens. I just, I just get nervous and I go gay. <laughs> I just get no <laughs> comment. Watch it out tomorrow. Watch out! <laughs> it can get weird. It can get weird. Sunday's uh, gonna be awkward. So yeah, what what is what is, what was the talking your microphone? What was the Jeez. topic 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 of today's oh, we show? Do we even have competing. a topic? Are we just freestyling? Well, we were, we were talking about Travis. We were going over his history as an athlete. And freestyling. Super accomplished, yeah. man. Super accomplished. He had, he had broken his back, and we were talking about how he was coming back from that right when you walked out. Yeah, dude. That was so. Yeah, I kn- I knew that. You know, I had never really met Travis. Um, but but obviously saw him winning like <laughs> winning winning like, <laughs> winning like every fucking local comp, and then all of a sudden last year you, you were like gone. I disappeared. Yeah, and I was like, whoa, fucking Houdini over here. <laughs> well, because you had some back problems too when you hurt your QL. Oh yeah, yeah you ripped yeah. your muscle in off fucking your back half. Well. You, you couldn't deadlift like, for a long time. In fucking half. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> it took me two years. To Maybe get we're my gonna back we're gonna have to start rapping about that. Yeah. The back injuries. Well, we'll, we'll smoke a blunt or two and fucking hit it. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do it. As long as nothing gay comes out of it, we'll I'll do be it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Travis is like, I don't know if I want to hang out with you all alone. And Matt's going to get stressed out. Next thing you know, he's going to get gay on me. <laughs> no, it's not like, dude, it's not like I always have, you know, you're rapping and you, you're, just, you're just gay. But it's like, dude, you're, just, you're just trying, you're, dude, you're thinking ahead of the moment. And, you know, you might try and, like, slip and all of a sudden you're like, dick. And you're like, whoa, dude, I didn't mean to say dick. Like, sorry, bro. I didn't mean to fucking come out, you know. It just came out. Dick, you know? My dick just came out. You know what I mean? Like. You know, I just was trying to figure out what the fuck Ryan was slipping real quick, and <laughs> Dick came out, and you know, it doesn't even rhyme. <laughs> yeah, great. Slipping Dick, maybe. It doesn't. It, doesn't it, it does if you're Eminem, dude. Yeah, you can make that rhyme, dude. Yeah, rapper, that, that, that's rappers, high just, level rapping. You just yeah. gotta make up words if you can't figure out what to rhyme. Or with. chicken Dick, whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever you want to. Yeah, go that with. rhymes. Too. I'm trying to prove a there point here that I'm not <laughs> purposely <laughs> trying to go gay here. What I'm saying is, in the fucking not on heat, purpose. It's in happening, the heat but of the moment, in the heat of the moment. He when might you're turn trying slightly to, when gay. you're trying to search, you know, your vernacular <laughs> for the proper <laughs> term, sometimes you might say some shit you didn't <laughs> want to say. Like, right? ha- like hamstring intelligence. Well, you know, <laughs> dude, tissue. I mean, dude, seriously, tissues get smart, right? The more you, the more, yeah. if you snatch enough, you've got. Is your brain a muscle? Yeah, of course it is. I'm of course head. it is. I'm I'm we, we've been asking a lot. Of, <laughs> you know I mean? We have been asking a lot of people that question lately, and that everyone was, says yes. That was the best answer I've ever heard. Yeah, of course I am. I'm a meathead, yeah. dude. You know, I'm literally, I'm literally down here to to lift weight for time and reps. If you don't think that I'm a meathead. You need to fucking check where you're at. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're literally about to go watch 4,000 people cheer on 
50 meatheads. If you're <laughs> arguing with people telling them, I am definitely a meathead, then you're a meathead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> most most yeah. people argue against it. They're like, don't call me that. That's yeah. kind of rude. I didn't say I, wouldn't, I, didn't say I wouldn't kind of smart. I, I take it as a compliment when people call me a meathead. Yeah, yeah. dude. You know? Huh. Embrace it. Yeah. I Notice feel like the meatheads are like the guys that are at the gym down the street that only with do the strong sun, man and powerlifting. Dude, with the sunglasses you're, on? You're a fucking meathead. You I feel you like got, you're a meathead if you get the lunk alarm pulled on you. <laughs> What's the lunk alarm? You don't know what the lunk alarm is? <laughs> no. We got one a faction now, dude. Oh, like the, <laughs> if, like the if, shit if, at 24-hour fitness? That's right. If you grunt or, or spill the chalk... You're out. Or if you drop your the, the siren goes Uh-oh. off. No, no, it's a plan of fitness. Like if, it's my whole fucking game. If you do something that intimidates anyone, you're basically, you're in trouble. You go, you go you're out. The corner. You're out. You're done. I've never been to a plan of fitness, but nah. I've heard about it. You get kicked out for everything. Shannon Alverson <clears throat> used to work there. We found out all the details. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, she said she worked there. and It was, it was funny because anytime anyone started doing anything that was that would work, they would tell me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting results. Stop. <laughs> right now. All right. right so now. actually, you know what? We get a lot of questions about back injuries and how to come back from that. Since both of you guys ha- have had a back injury before and come at come back from that, and now you're both high-level competitors, uh, maybe individually tell us kind of like what that progression was like, like what, what kind of stuff you started doing again, and how you got back to like where you're at today after having a serious injury. Heavy back squats. Heavy back <laughs> squats. Well, you one rm your very first day back. Did you one rm your very first no, day back? Dude, no, You couldn't man. do shit for a long dude, time. I couldn't do shit for like... 86 days 86 um, days yeah. like Are you like marking that. them off on the calendar? Hon- honestly yeah yeah oh, and th- and to be to be to be serious it, it made me realize how um how important like fitness is and how important at this point in my life competitive crossfit was right because you can all we can all play the oh yeah man like you know i just fucking do crossfit and like i'm pretty good at it and like it doesn't really i really don't care about it and it's like fucking get hurt dude and don't do shit for 80 days and fucking tell me that that shit doesn't matter to you you shit care matters, about it shit matters a whole lot man and and um dude really what it was i told you i contacted bill star right and he gave me that yeah. that like that like fucking antiquated rehab <laughs> program where he was like you need to start with the bear bar and do 75 deadlifts with the bear bar and then i worked up um but dude, it, a There's lot of people right now googling bear bar. What's the bear bar? Is the bear bar? What's the bear bar? Do I need a bear bar? Yeah. Bear bar. What's the bear yeah. bar? Yeah. 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 It makes it was, noises. It a lot of it, you know, and that's great. A Travis PR'd his first day back, but like, dude, that's luck, bro. Bro, I, I don't dude. do not go try that. Dude, I literally, I, le- I, you know, I had a low deadlift at like four thirty, and then I tore it, not not doing a one RM, but tore it, and then it essentially took two years. For me to even either have the mental like toughness to deadlift over 400 again, or or just or just like the strength to do it, or my back to be to be like yeah, I can imagine if you tear the muscles in your back and then that hurts. Like to to go for a heavy deadlift after that has got to be oh, extremely dude, intimidating. It scared the shit out of me, man. Yeah. It scared the shit out of me. And I'll tell you right now, in 2011, you know, I was doing doing pretty well at regionals, and literally I had like one finish outside the top six, and that was because of that deadlift fly that we're about to do on Saturday. I'm going to fuck that thing up, dude. I'm so <laughs> fucking excited about it. I'm saying it right now. I'm going to fuck that workout up. Dude, that workout, dude, honestly, man, it's like it's like poetic. And who knows, man? Anything could happen with that workout. I could finish 33rd again. But my, I was very, very happy to see that to see that come up. Um, get, get to redeem yourself. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. It's a, and, and, and maybe if I don't redeem myself, at least, in, at least it's an opportunity at redemption, right? That's, that's, that's all you can ask for. Right? right? My is shit that, just went limp. It's like, <laughs> I'm limp. It's like, what do I do? It's like, is, 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 that's really all you can ask for, right? Is if something defeats you like that, you know? Got to conquer it. Yeah, man. Like, you literally, you get another opportunity at it. And, you know, and, and if I do poorly at it again, at least I know that I'll go in with the mental toughness to attack it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, you know, Travis, he came back from his back injury and uh, with a one rep max and a <laughs> new PR. Yeah, I didn't you came know. back with your, from yours taking a, a very conservative approach. I, dude, honestly, that's where I fell in love with Olympic lifting, right? And that's when I met John Coffey and started working out probably, with him. Probably doing pools yeah, in, in, a, yeah, in pools, a very a lot of reverse technical hypers, way. A lot, of, a lot of work from the hang, a lot of work from the blocks. Um, and and it and it, it actually changed my perception or my perspective on on how to on how to strength train and you know I'd say my entire strength program now is is built around Olympic lifting because um, of that. Talking about back injuries and how to come back from them reminds me of a, a time um, we were sitting and I think I want to say we were having breakfast with Louis Simmons. 
Oh, I think Columbus, God. Ohio. Fucking, yeah. Here we go. Here we fucking go. <laughs> Name dropping. Fucking, That's it. I think we were having breakfast. I mean, Who's that guy? I, mean, I don't remember. Who's, Who's I don't this remember. guy? The guy, Louis yeah. Simmons? Yeah, we yeah. were having oh, breakfast at a guy? Denny's. We were eating pancakes. <laughs> no, it was... Uh, Louis asked me out. I can't I remember. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Louis bought me breakfast and all, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, but it, we were talking about back injuries and coming back from them then. And um, I guess he had fractured his back at some point. Fucking broke his back. He like, said he would never. They said he would never lift. Yeah, they were like, "You're yeah, not gonna lift again." Fractured. He broke it. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. It wasn't like a fucking hairline <laughs> fracture in his fucking. It was a, in one of his vertebrae. It was, it was a, a fucking. It was a lactate mineral bone <laughs> density <laughs> fracture. Dude, That's he right. fucking. Dude, he fucking. He tore like, it up pretty good. Yeah, he fucking yeah. broke it. Like he literally was almost paralyzed. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think, I think he messed it up pretty good. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I fucked guess, up, Doug. Smug bastard. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but like, but for him, like he didn't take he didn't take time off. It, it's funny just because of how different people approach it. You just took off time, did some PT shit, and then hit it hard. You kind of took the much more conservative approach over time, but I guess the next day he was jumping onto a like a two by four. It was like he he it was like the next day he was like jumping on a you know something that high, and then he worked till he got a little bit higher, and then he <clears throat> did the bare bar and some like that. intelligence. He was building <laughs> yeah, up hamstring intelligence for sure. He was developing. But yeah, there's definitely <laughs> different ways to approach it. I mean, I would advise that you would probably want to go to a physical therapist and probably do that for a little while, and then. I I, kind of, I do like the the maybe seventy five deadlifts with just a bear bar. I mean, I think they, they it, was like, it, was, it was weird, dude. It that's was that, like that, that's a bear, man. <laughs> it was like with the bear bar. It was <laughs> it was like it was weird. It we're gonna come like, out, progress we're, five kilos hey, rogue, every day. Rogue, you should make a make, bear. make a bear bar for us. <laughs> oh my god! It'll be, it'll be, the, bar, it'll be bar. the barbell shrug bear bar. That's a good name. You're getting a little sun over there, Mike. You're not. Yeah, you're that sun that's red, dude. It's that getting hot. The complexion of yours isn't very conducive to, to tan. <laughs> should, we ta- should we take it's a break? It's going to happen. Yeah, let's take a break. Let's take a little break. When we come back, we're going to swim. We're going to. Yeah, we'll, gonna, be, in, we'll, we'll be, be in the pool. We're going to take Travis all this podcast equipment in the pool. I'm, g- <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to splash, Matt. You're going to splash, Matt? Is that a gay thing? I'm going to fucking pick Mike up and throw him in the pool when I am that little guy. Me and Mike are going to put Travis Matt on our shoulders. We're going to chicken fight. (laughs) Quad one. That would be the intro of the show. This week on Bubble Shrugged, we chicken fight (laughs) with Matt and Travis. And we get hurt. We're fucking (laughs) furious. Why do those two guys not make it? Uh Uh-oh. Justin Matt's in the house. Justin Matt. Is that a neighbor? Dang, man. Is that a neighbor? He's got the movie. He's he, he's coming here to narrate my life. He said he was James, gonna, Is that James Cheney's long lost brother? <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> Holy get, shit! Every time I see Justin, he looks different. You know James, Why are you staying yeah, out there? Do you what do you know do? Why don't you come Cheney? in? Why don't you come, creeping on us? <laughs> you, you can come in, bro. Yeah. Come on, this is way too heavy dude. To All right, let's take a break. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking with Justin Metz. <laughs> Justin Metz. Maybe. Welcome back to Technique Quad. My name is Doug Larson from the Barbell Shrug Podcast. You can find us at barbellshrug.com. Today I want to talk about clean and snatch high pulls. So this is kind of a, a movement that a lot of people aren't very comfortable with. Uh, for some people, it really screws them up, uh, but a lot of people like them. And depending on your particular preference, you, know, you, you could be one or the other. So if you happen to be a person that likes it, then this is going to be a great show for you. If you happen to be a person that doesn't like it, there might be a reason you don't like it. Maybe you're not very good at it or you just don't feel like your technique is the same as it is when you do the full movement. Hopefully, after watching this, um, you'll be a little bit better at it and maybe you'll start to like these movements. So here's what they look like if you have never seen them before. For a clean, I'm here. Exact same technique. Okay. All I'm doing is basically pulling elbows high. For the snatch, again, the exact same thing. I'm here. So bar is popping off upper thigh, just like a normal clean, and right off my hips, just like a normal snatch. And I'm guiding the weight straight up, elbows high, just like my elbows should be for the regular movement. So um, one reason we like to do these is because uh, for some people, Um, Doing this lets them know if they are being pulled forward or if they're being pulled backward by the weight. Some people will go here 
Now you saw when I did it, I went straight up and straight down. My feet basically didn't move at all. If you're going heavy, heavier than this, then you, know, you might take a little step back, but you definitely don't want to be pulled forward. You'll see some people will go like this. They'll do their snatch high pull, and they'll pull the weight away from them, either if they hit low or if their hips come up, it'll pull them forward. So, um, you know, you get a lot of feedback on the full movement, but with the high pull also, if you can't come here and pull straight up and straight down, then you also know if you're being, uh, if you're getting off balance, if your technique is skewed in some way where it's pulling you forward. So getting pulled backward isn't as big of a deal, but ideally you come straight up and straight down. Um, the movement's basically the same as a clean or a snatch pull, except usually it's a little bit lighter. That way when I get to here, I go, I go to explode, I shrug, and then with the pull, it's usually heavier, and so the weight kind of floats, and then I drop it on the ground. This is lighter, and so again, I'm just guiding it with my arms. I'm keeping it close to my body. I never want to curl the weight. That's another reason that we would do these movements if someone, if someone is chronically, if someone chronically pulls the weights like this, if you're the person that does a curl, especially if you're a person that stops right here, uh, then this is a good movement to help you get that more upright row type position uh, where your hands are staying close to you, elbows are staying above the hands. That way when I go to rack, the bar is here and I'm just rotating around the bar to get into my rack position. So if you're curling, this is a good option for you. That's a very good point. So if you have a, a shoulder injury and you can't do anything overhead for the time being, um, I'm a good example of that. I do a lot of snatch deadlifts, snatch pulls, and snatch high pulls because I don't do a lot of overhead work um, anymore. It just it wreaks havoc on my shoulder. Uh, after I had a shoulder surgery after an MMA fight a couple years ago, I don't do much in the way of overhead squats and jerks anymore. So for me, I can't catch it overhead, but I can go here and I can still get the most athletic part of the movement done, which really is the explosive second pull part of the movement. I can stand in good posture, I can jump, get on my toes, and accelerate the weight, and work on pushing into the ground really, really hard, really, really fast, you know, which helps with, with jumping and running and almost any sport on the planet, on the planet basically. Uh, so I can still get the athletic benefit of snatches without actually catching it overhead. You know, doing overhead squats and whatnot and full snatches has their own set of benefits, and that's great, um, but I can get uh, a big chunk of those benefits by just doing um, the pulls and the deadlifts. As far as common errors go, uh, the common errors are pretty much the exact same um, as they would be on cleans and snatches. You want to always, to give you a, a brief review of good technique on cleans and snatches, you want to always you know, get to a neutral spine, butt down, and I want to start with my butt too high. So I'm here, my butt stays down, I pass my knee, I push my knees under the bar until the bar touches the upper thigh. It never touches any lower than that. And then from here, my arms stay down, I jump, and catch the weight right on my shoulders. I always want to have my elbows nice and high. If I want to open my hands, I can. If I want to close them, I can too, but my elbows should pretty much be right in front of me. Some people get away with being more like right here. That's okay, but I definitely don't want to have it floating off of my chest. I want to have it, kill my microphone, I want to have it right here. Okay. Um, a great demo that we do for that to show that you don't need to be grabbing, to show that you don't need to be grabbing the weight is the, the no hands clean. Uh, this would be a great one for everyone to go practice. I'm not recommending you do this, but it's kind of fun if you want to. It's to be here, <coughs> to be here and just pull it up onto your shoulders and catch it. That way you know that you can be right here and not have to really be grabbing the weight. My pinkies are actually off the bar. I'm here, okay? I can front squat in that position, no problem. Okay, so that's especially a good thing if you're a person who, for whatever reason, you don't have a lot of external rotation, range of motion, or wrist flexibility. And sometimes you'll lose one hand. There's plenty of people that lose one hand like this, they'll come here, but since I'm throwing it in the right spot, and my elbows are high, it doesn't matter, I can still stand up, get my position back, 
reset my feet, and I'm ready to go into my jerk. Uh, if you have any more questions about clean or snatch high pulls, you can go to barbellshrug.com, click the Ask a Question tab at the top of the page, and you can ask us a question there, and we'll maybe we'll do a technique wad on that in the future. 14, 13, 12, All right. 11. Mike Bledsoe Countdown. here with Doug Larson and our guests, <laughs> Travis Mayer and Matt Baird here at the Southeast Regional. We're here. Night before. So it's uh, Thursday night. We're going to get kick it off at around uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Not us. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't <laughs> go. We don't start till like 12.45. <laughs> yep. Yeah, y'all yep. go afternoon, but do you have to be there be earlier there. in the day yes, you do. for the meeting? Wait, are you going to go back home and then? Fuck yes. I'm going to go <laughs> check in, then go back. Yes. Okay. So you're not going to watch and... And dwell on I'm gonna no. go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go I'm sleep. Gonna, I'm not gonna walk around for four hours wondering what the fuck I'm gonna do with Jackie. I'm just gonna go back home. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, Here we, we get lots of questions about what to eat on competition day. What do you guys eat on competition day? Dude, oh, don't yeah. change it up, man. We're switching just it keep up. Keep it the keep same. It, keep it just like a fucking normal what? training. Oh, I thought you were talking Cookie to me. <laughs> I was well, like, I'm changing it up. It's well, that's the thing crazy. is like you want to yeah. practice how you're gonna compete, but like, what do you do? At home too, like I you don't cookie. change it, but what is it that you're not changing? Cookie you, cake every day. You eat cake? I eat a piece of cookie cake every night. There cookie cake every night. Cookie D cake every night. Legit, uh, a piece of cookie cake. No, every no night. one's really serious. That. We're all like, oh, yeah. is no, this serious? is dead serious. serious. I don't like, know anyone that eats cookie cake. I do a lot. Well, now I do. I know cookie you. It's great. I don't eat it every day, but I should. <laughs> hey, I should. should. Hey, Max said it was okay. So was if like, you, so you guys are bringing your own meals to this then? Yeah, I know. I know it's catered, but you bringing your own meals anyway. I'm gonna be hitting up like. A little bit of, little bit of fucking applesauce <laughs> and some fucking sweet potato puree and some fucking chicken between events. Probably Baby some, food. Probably That's some it. rice. Probably some rice too. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Like, like definitely after event four, <laughs> I'll eat some rice. I was talking to Shana about that. She was like, "What? Do you, what should I eat between?" I was like. Maybe get like some uh, sweet potato baby food and some applesauce. Yeah, deli meat. And she was like, she was like, baby food. Ew. I was like, all right, pureed sweet potato. She's like, okay. That sounds really good. <laughs> That's what it is. As long as I don't call it baby food, the it's only, okay. The, honestly, the only difference between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday meal wise and this regular training days is that I might eat just a little bit less. You know I mean? At the competition, yeah. Yeah. yeah, just a little bit less. You want your GI tract a little fucking empty. That's so you eat less like, food overall, just, but are you more carb heavy? Fuck yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Although Significantly. I'm, although, although, dude, although I'm super carb heavy anyway. Are you? Yeah. You yeah. got super high volume training. You train yeah, twice yeah. a day most days? Twice a day, every day from August until until <coughs> the middle of the open. Uh, the middle of the open and then we do it. Matt's we having a stroke right now. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> see, 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 it's weird. See, it's weird, man, because when you say twice, train twice a day, yeah. like some days I might train five times, but the sessions are the sessions are like... You know, every minute on the minute snatch for 20 minutes from from 155 to 275, and that's a, and that's a session. Right. You know what I mean? And then and then and then rest. He blows past my PR on my snatch. And then rest. <laughs> and then rest. You know what I mean? And my then, all, all of us. Yeah. And, then, and then go back squat later. You know what I mean? Like so. Yeah. So like what Travis gets done in in maybe two sessions a day, I might get done in five. Oh, just, I thought you were gonna say one. I was like, oh, well, no, I know. I was, I was about to say the it. trash talking yeah, started. No, no, that's no, right. No. And it's just, dude. So CJ just figured out with me, man. Like, I don't really like to work. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, I don't really like to work. Like, for, I don't, I don't, I don't I like, like to work. work hard. I don't like to work. Like, I just don't respond really well to working past like an hour or so. Like, so, so we all my sessions are, are, are you know, fifteen to thirty minutes, if that, and then and then we rest and we fuel and we go again. So we train all yeah. day. So, so, you're, you know so your normal training day is kind of like a competition. You do you do a short block and then you take a break and then yeah, you do a short block yeah. and then you take a break and then you do a short block. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. just figured that out. He's, just, he's <laughs> like, oh it my just, god, it just yeah. is. Yeah. It's crazy. Now, I so like so like so like we so w the weeks leading up to to regionals after the open, we were training. You know, I wake up at six a.m. and go in and, and loosen up for twenty minutes, do some sort of either interval work or 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 recovery work, and then lift either snatch or clean and jerk. You know what I mean for reps or for load. And then do some sort of conditioning tester, some sort what, of gymnastics. What about reps and load? Both, yeah. yeah sometimes, yeah. yeah. And then, like, yeah. Together? Yeah. And, At the um, same time? <laughs> yeah, and then, like, later in the day, we do some sort of some sort of tester, right? And then do some skill work and some gymnastics work or gymnastics tester. And then we do some more strength work. And then we test again. And then maybe rest and test again. What, what would be considered a gymnastics tester? Uh, you know, you could do, like, you do like uh, three rounds of, like, you know, 20, 20 toes to bar. 30 pistols, 50 double unders. You know, we did one where it was like 20 unbroken 
uh, bar muscle ups, thirty toes to bar four, or thirty. Twenty pistol. unbroken bar muscle ups. Love it. Two oh, fo- forty on that one. Two, twenty unbroken bar muscle ups, thirty pistols, forty forty toes to bar. Unbroken. Wow. Yeah. Can, can you do that, Travis? Of course he can. He's a fucking freak, dude. <laughs> yeah, let, me tell you something. let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There is nothing. There is nothing, and I don't give a shit who it is. There is nothing in any one of these competitors' training that no that any one of the other guys couldn't do. No one's doing anything special, buddy. It's true. It really is true. Twenties a lot. It's, take, it's, take, it's, take, it's taking me. It's like, taking me. He, he's speaking for it's, me. It's take, it's, dude, it's taking me a minute a to realize that individualized training is super important and you got to find a coach that that knows you and knows the type of athlete you are and can program for you and and i'm sure max does a great job of that as evidenced through travis's success right and cj's done you know i think a decent job for me and how often do you talk to him cj yeah every day every single day yeah how often talk to max every day every day yeah how how often do you talk to shana He's like once a, once a month, once every two weeks. <laughs> He's like, once you pay nah. <laughs> when yeah. the fucking check clears. <laughs> but, but All right, you know, I, I will say this: like, if you're, it depends. I mean, if you're if you're about to go to the games and it's you know the the two three months leading up to the big competition, yeah, your communication is going to be really wide open all yeah. the time. You know, you got to hear back how the morning session went just to see if they're going to train that afternoon or something like that. So yeah, I mean, I communicate with Shana quite a bit and. And uh, twice a week. <laughs> uh, yeah, she, she gets the yeah. She's protest. in the kitchen cooking food <laughs> <laughs> and competing she's and fucking and, <laughs> and and Mike expects her to win. Y'all do talk pretty often, though, or at least text pretty often. Probably every day. Get yeah. a little bit of feedback. We, yeah, every day. We, t- we we talk about it every day. I but, feel like you need to. But yeah. you, you need know, to stay in contact have, every day. If you have an athlete that's not, you know, approaching regionals and stuff like that, like once every two weeks, once a month. Email, you know, email is good, and then like get on the phone once a month. I think that's perfectly fine. But if once it gets, you know, the mo- the few months leading up to the competitions, then that's when you got, because you probably didn't talk to like CJ every day like six months, three hundred and sixty five no. days a year. We we no we talk. The, <laughs> and if that's the case, that's just because you're a basket case. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta we gotta mitigate He's this guy. No not, no not man. no. Else. I would tell you. I'd, t- I'd say that you know I at least talk to him once or twice a week through text throughout the year, and unless something, unless he just wants to know, like, hey, let me know how this went, and then obviously the closer we get to competition, like you said, right? <laughs> right. she was in the car this whole time waiting for <laughs> right. you. So anyway. we're, we're busy. We're busy. <laughs> no, but, you know, we it's have weird. stuff to talk about, dude. It's weird. If you, if you, I, I, I was serious, so what I said about about volume in the sense that like, I don't think anyone's doing more. Like you can't say like Travis. It, it, or, or me or the next guy is training harder than the next yeah. person. We're all fucking, dude, we're all training as hard as, as my body, yeah. his body, that dude's body. <laughs> as hard as body. your body can go. Yeah, man. And like, and like, that's what, that's where the merits of that, of that, of that, that coaching is found, right? And that, that idea that like, you know, Max figured out that Travis likes, you know, this amount of time and, and for two sessions a day, and he figures that that's what gives him the best result. And in the same sense, you know, Zach and I, we do, Three to five a day, and it's it's probably and if but if you looked at it over the course of a of an hour thing, I guarantee it's, it's the probably same. the same. Yeah, dude, it's like the same shit. <laughs> Do you guys think really focusing on your strengths is the better strategy, or focusing on your goats, your weaknesses? I know I know that OPT has a pretty pretty candid theory about that in the sense that he calls it essence of athlete, and that if you take an athlete out of their essence area too much mm-hmm. and focus on their weaknesses, that they won't even be good at what they're good at anymore. So it's more of one of those things where you 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 kind of oh he's a great uh, you know, he's a this guy's a, a great lifter, so we make him lift and and practice movement. Oh, and this guy's a great you know metabolic athlete, and we we kind of drill that. And obviously, each athlete, each coach is going to have a, a, a built-in template of what they believe is important, right? But but I, I think that it's 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 a fine line, and I honestly think that that's up to the coach, man. You know, I think that I think that I think a lot of athletes focus too much on their weaknesses, and they never. And then you just don't even enjoy it. Because yeah, dude, the thing about weaknesses is like if I, I'm a bad runner, right? And so I will never be able to beat him in a 5K. It's just not going to fucking happen. So if I spend all my fucking time trying to catch him in a 5K, guess what? All the shit I'm good at, I'm no longer going to be good at because I've spent all my fucking time trying to beat him in a fucking race. So rather than trying to make me a great runner, just don't make me a bad runner, right? Let's, let's make sure that I go from being a runner that would lose an event because of, an, because of a race mm-hmm. to not losing the event, to getting middle of the pack. Yeah, you top know? 10. Top 10, right? And then let's make sure that the shit that I'm good at, we're fucking good at. Let's make sure that that shit we win 
in the event, right? I totally agree with that. I was talking to Brandon Slay, who's an Olympic gold medalist in wrestling, and he said his coach told him to spend 75% of his time on his strengths, the things he was really good at, 20% of his time on things he was kind of good at, and only 5% of the time on things that he just wasn't ever going to be good at. Right. That just focus sense. on your strengths, and you can get first place in those events and then just kind of survive the other events. Yeah, man, and it's, and, it, and you can look at it as an athlete and be like, oh, my, your ego's involved, and be like, man, you know, fuck that, I'm going to win that fucking race. And it's like, dude, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not you're not gonna you won't you know what i mean like this guy this guy doesn't run at all and he's fucking 16 minute 5k and you're over here running every day running fucking 22 minutes like buddy this shit ain't gonna work you yeah know i would mean? never i would never be able to beat you I'm yeah like, so even and that's like the same thing pounds. if it, you put me in an olympic lifting yeah you know i'm not gonna spend all day just doing that because you're a little this longer guy's guy like 30 pounds on a snatch 40 pounds heavier than me and there's just no that's way i'm gonna point. catch I mean, that and not even not even just to like you know uh how much experience you've had in those things but like matt's got the build of a weightlifter, yeah. and you have the build of a runner. Of a runner. So, like, a really fucking muscular he's a, runner. He's like a gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> really he's fucking like muscular a, runner. A muscular I don't know, gazelle. I don't know many ultra dudes that are rolling with fucking tin packs. <laughs> but anyway, listen, my fucking my fucking fiance is gonna fucking kill me, <laughs> <laughs> regardless of how I do in this event this weekend. So I gotta go. But all right, man. Oh, all right, man. Tomorrow morning. Sounds good. I will see you in the morning. Thanks for the time, guys. That's yeah, always fun. I love you guys. See you, see you brother. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Mets? Yeah, I don't know. Where'd our where'd our movie producer go? <laughs> we're making a movie. He doesn't have his camera. If we're, if we're judging by you. the enormous camera he brought out here. Oh, that's right. Oh, the camera is. is unmanned. <laughs> Take it. It's yeah. only one ninety nine if anybody needs it. <laughs> yeah, we could sell shoulder that. Shoulder support, the, the, everything. I think, I think the shoulder <laughs> thing and the screen and all that stuff is one ninety nine. I think the camera itself is probably like eight hundred. Yeah. Twenty two ninety nine. Yeah. Twenty two ninety nine. <laughs> Um, yeah, talking about, I think we already went over that though. The appropriate volume for athletes. I, I, I think that's like the most important part of like individualized programming. Yeah. It's just, especially in it's a sport where athlete. high volume is necessary and you can't just throw an athlete into a high volume program and just expect them to survive or not make it, you know, make it or not make it. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to find what that appropriate volume is for that athlete. That's kind of like how my approach to coaching people is like, find out what's appropriate for them and then build from there. Yeah. Progression most of the year. And then, and then you gotta throw them in the water, you know, a few months leading up to the competition, and and see if uh, see if they swim. Is that kind of how Max programs? I mean, yeah. He he chimed in. Matt chimed in and said that you know focusing on your strengths is a good idea. Is that kind of their same philosophy? Yeah, you know? kind of. Uh, for me personally, though, I like to hit things a lot that I'm really bad at because I want to be good at them, and I know I'll still always be a decent runner even if I don't run. Like I I can't even remember the last time I ran. Like it just, yeah. I don't run often, but yeah. I really need to be decent at a lot of overhead work that I really struggle in because mm -hmm. my scapula and everything is just horrible. <laughs> so pretty much for me personally, I have to do a lot of jerk work, snatch, tall snatch, things like that that are going to benefit yeah. more for me. <laughs> They're coming. They're coming. They're, they <laughs> They're found coming. us. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, a, are you a track athlete or something? What's your background uh, there? Race motocross for about eight years, then track, cross country, uh, basketball, and a little bit of baseball when I was a kid. That was pretty much it. Motocross see, was the main thing. Baseball. Oh, yeah, yeah, until we started that fast pitch ball. league, I was like, ah, oh, screw this, man. I don't want to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is not on the team anymore. So then I, hopped, then I hopped on two wheels and we hit the ground at like 60 miles an hour. Yeah. So I figured that was a little better. There you yeah. go. Safer, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Wake up in the hospital, yeah. not know where you're at. That. Damn. <laughs> couple concussions yeah. it's like travis pastrana's had like 35 knee surgeries or something like that he's had an insane amount of surgeries yeah but he's still doing a phenomenal job yeah he's that guy crazy. Is unbelievable yeah at everything so what got you in the cross we got mets on the mic give Justin me a cool mets. movie voice you're gonna narrow my life soon we talked about this yeah introduce yourself in a sweet no, way mets mets was a dj in a past <coughs> life do you still do any djing um, I DJ Garage Game. Speak up. Oh, well, well, well. Uh, how hey, you not your know nose how? needs to be touching the mic yeah, right now. Travis, come on, Can't do it. Come on, I need a hot look. mic. I need a hot mic. When was the, when was the last time a guy put his back hand on the back of your head and pulled it forward? Sweet. <laughs> oh, jeez. The podcast yeah, I, has taken a turn. That's right. <laughs> it's just not, yeah. Kids are in the car, just don't. A lot of people don't listen to our show with the kids in the car, that's for sure. Yeah. A lot hey. of people do, though. <laughs> yeah. The kids are gonna be fucked up. <laughs> Keep the PG thirteen. <laughs> All right, so that's <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the, is that's this the file show. supposed to be labeled sixty because we did sixty last week. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, okay, okay. Uh, what got you into uh, CrossFit? How'd you find CrossFit, Travis? Uh, I was a personal trainer, and one of my buddies actually, Kemp, was like, hey, check out some of these videos of actually Chris Spieler doing some workouts. Yeah. And I was like, and I saw him doing Fran. I was like, oh, that looks awesome. So for some reason, I don't know why, we thought the RX weight was 115. Nice. <laughs> which was, of course, a bad idea. And then I pretty much did strict pull-ups the whole time. Threw up everywhere as soon as I got done. Nice. Yeah. Fell in love. Two and, then, and a half minutes, right? <laughs> like seven. Seven. Wow, man. That's a great initial Fran time. I mean, if, if, someone does, if someone does Fran for the first time, does dead hang pull-ups and does it in seven <laughs> minutes, oh, like, well, you might want to compete. Really? That's, that's why I'm competing. Seven minutes with dead hand? Yeah. C. Oof. Fuck me in the face. <laughs> in the face. <laughs> Yeah. Some guys think but that the heavier back stuff head. isn't quite as bad. Like no, lighter stuff, I've, since you can go so much faster, it's worse. worse. It's it worse. Is. It's like I'd rather do 135 pound thrusters than 95 pound thrusters. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I remember, uh, I forget who told me this. Uh, they said the worst workout they ever did was run 400, row 500, one <laughs> round. That's it. Yeah. Because you can go fucking that. super hard and, oh, yeah. and go fast the whole time. You have to go fast the whole time. That's like I'm a two-minute workout. I'm going to say a three-minute row. The 500-meter three repeats, <laughs> the like five-by-five-hundreds, like you have like three minutes rest after each one. I just nasty. Those are the worst. Just enough time to recover. 100-meter sprints are pretty bad. Actually, yeah. do you? Uh, I know McGoldrick does this a lot since he gets trained uh, uh, by James. or Does James do his program or is it somebody yeah. else? James, James, does, James, James, James does, does, does Mike. Yeah. James OPT Fitzgerald. That's right. That's right. What's up? So he does. he does a lot of like 30-on, 30-off for like 30 rounds on the Airdyne, that's got to just be nasty. Yes, I do a lot of that. You do a lot of that? Airdyne, You got the fine running. dining shirt on? I do, fine dining. Fine dining, yeah. Airdyne. So you do, you do, OPT. You do a lot of Airdyne <laughs> with OPT? Or with uh, Max? Probably not as much as Mike does. I don't yeah. think I do nearly as much. I do a lot more on the rower and running, probably more with that. Why Every is that? Every minute on the minute. I don't know. Is there a reason for it? Ask Max. Ask He's Max. He's not here. I don't ask questions. I'm just the athlete. Max, why do I, I do that? Why do I do that? I don't know, but whatever it's doing, it's all working. Yeah, I think okay. that's probably, the, as an athlete, that's the best approach. Is like, all right, I'll just do whatever you say. Coach that's, that's pretty so. much when, how When it you is. start questioning, that's when you stop believing, and that's when, pretty that's when, like, it. you don't, you stop training as hard. You know what I mean? You just got to trust the program, put the work in, you know. Because I know, like, the first few months I started with him, I was like, seriously, this is what we're doing? This is stupid. Yeah. And then after that, he pretty much, like, destroyed me, and then... I love it. I think <laughs> that I, was I, about that was about when I got up there too, wasn't it? Yeah. It it Fair takes like four yeah. to eight weeks to kind of figure the athlete out, like yeah. kind of where they stand, you know, what they can handle, what they're good at, what they're bad at. I mean, you can you can set them up with a bunch of testers, but you still until you see them train week after week, you really don't, you know, have an idea of like exactly where they're at. Yeah. First tester he had you do, then or I think the first day we were up there, what? fifty handstand push-ups strict handstand push, handstand push up. Yeah. Miserable. Yeah, I beat to you like, at that. By the way, yeah, <laughs> took, <laughs> took me like seven minutes. Rex sore traps. He wins next the game. Be like, yeah. I beat him that time at the handstand nice. pushups. But now I've got it down to like I think it's like two and a half. Yeah, it's so sure, it's, that's way better. So like, <laughs> how do you break like, that up? Now fifty. Yeah. Uh, usually like close to twenty, and then however oh, really? I feel after that. Boy, what uh, what what event this weekend are you looking forward to the least? The least? Yeah. Which event are you like? All right, you know, if they just left that out, I'd be cool. Probably the deadlift box jump because my lower back. Yeah. I just don't want him to seize up. That hundreds is pretty brutal, though. I did, I did that, what was it, a week and a half ago? Yeah. It was rough. Well, the, dumbbell, the dumbbell snatch is where it's going to be one. It's going to be rough, but is that something that you're better at, though? Yeah. I usually like the longer workouts. I love pistols. Love wall yeah. balls. Yeah. Chest bar pull-ups aren't that bad, so. It'll hurt, pretty, but you'll place high. Yeah. And then yeah. the dumbbell snatch is where it's just going to come down to. I think so. I think there's going to be a lot of like standing around and staring at it, and then the, your motivational. All you have to, all have you have to, do to look is just around go. and try to keep up with people around you. Yeah. Don't or look, stay ahead of them. Yeah. Just look straight ahead. Just go. What? Uh, which one do you like the most? What's your Jackie. Favorite? Jackie. Bring it on. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm thinking like, I'm hoping 505. Really? So I'm shooting for. That'd be smoking fast, man. I busted out a 518. Oh really? The other week and nice. S- s- Got a little too comfortable on the row. Should have picked up the pace a little more. But then yeah. I did 15 and 15 on the pull-ups instead of all 30. That's a Eric, tough one Eric to pace. told me about it. You got a little bit too comfortable at a 130 pace <laughs> yeah. for 1,000 meters. <laughs> yeah. Very uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Sound, sounds comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it's very comfortable. About, no way, man. Is it Mick Goldrick? He don't, well, actually, he asked me. Not, yeah, I'm not going to talk about his training. I, think he's I spontaneously training. raced Mick Goldrick like, at a 1,000-meter row a couple of years ago. He was like, I was just walking around coaching class, and he was like, you want to race 1,000? I was like, no. 
<laughs> the yeah, maybe I do. Yeah, no. I do. Yeah, I do. And then I, d- I didn't even barely warm up. <laughs> I was like one of the most tired I've ever been. Like Fran Lung, that shit wrecked me. That's a yeah. burns, man. Yeah. You don't warm up. You hop on a row <laughs> oh, like yeah. that all yeah, out. Yeah, that hurts. Row. I think I did a hundred percent the other day of a. Yeah, it was like row three fifty. Yeah. Twenty five thrusters with a bar and then fifteen pull ups. Yeah. And I didn't really warm up. Oh my god, I threw up everywhere when I got done. <laughs> And because I ate steak right before, so I could be wild, but <laughs> you just steak. wasted that steak, <laughs> right. dude. But then we had it at my girlfriend's parents' house right after, so it's okay. So you got like double the steak. <laughs> it works out. So what was the main thing that that um, kind of prompted you to decide to get individualized programming from Max? Like everyone kind of goes through a very similar progression where they they. You know, they do Fran, and they love CrossFit, and then they do it like the regular wads for a while, and then they decide, wow, this really isn't working as well as it used to work, and then they get a coach, and then, like, yeah, like, kind of ever how did that go for you? Ever since I kind of got into it, I realized oh, this is what I wanted to do. So one of the guys, Wes Harper from The Garage, actually started programming for me pretty soon, like, right when I got into it. Like, I worked out with a class probably a month maybe, and then after that, it's been, like, personal programming ever since I've been in the CrossFit. Oh, wow. <laughs> so then after I worked with Wes, I went straight to Nate Trader. Worked with him for about six to eight months. And then I knew Nate used OPT for a while. And I was like, all right. Let's, and he's, a, of course, a Viking. So <laughs> the guy's incredibly good. Yeah. Um, so I realized I wanted to talk to Max at OPT. And I knew a couple people that moved out there to do work with them. And they have gotten a lot better. So I was like, hey, let's see what this guy's all about. And then did a few testing workouts with him. And pretty much the rest is history. Do you have any training partners? Or do you train train by myself every day. How's that mentally? Good. Because then it makes you push yourself even harder yeah. when you get around a lot of people. So if you're able to push yourself mentally by yourself, then you're good when but you even can get around a competition. Yeah. So everybody's like, ah, oh, I hate training by myself. But if you get good training by yourself, then what do you have to worry about when you're with people? Yeah. You push yourself even more. Your accountability is <laughs> to the coach, too. I mean, you got to report back every day, I'm sure. Yeah. Report back the results. Yeah. I'm going to have to go here and say it. Cool. I got 10 minutes to get back to my hotel. Do you? All right. Well, let's just go ahead and call it then. <laughs> I don't want you to have to walk off without us doing like a proper sign off. Proper. Do I need to rap as we sign off? I, I would love it. I want to let you. Are you sure I, it's not the cops coming in the background? Uh, they've yeah. already came. <laughs> do you have any? Uh, do you have any sponsors or anything you want to promote, real quick? Wildlife OPT. Let's go, guys. Uh, let's see. What is Wildlife? That was a clothing hell of a company. Promotion. So what? Yes. Clothing company. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see, Killcliff helps out. Yeah. Good bit. Um, parents, God, girlfriend. You know, couldn't do it without coaches, Max, and all you guys for helping me out. You know what I'm saying? It's a good, good support. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I didn't leave any other sponsors off. There you go. If I did, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> Just drop him. Progenix doesn't sponsor me. They should. Take it, take it <laughs> off the table. Take it off the table. But they do sponsor us. <laughs> they do sponsor <laughs> factions. <laughs> <That's very true. laughs> They're going to get promoted. <laughs> there you go, Progenix. Look, now you're going to get some more free stuff. Just for that advertising right there. <laughs> I do like free stuff. What's the deal yeah. with Progenix, Mike? All right. If you, uh, if you I'm signing advice, off, bro. Thanks, guys. All right, man. Guys. Let's see all you, right. bro. Later, Travis. <laughs> yeah. We can keep going. He got his plugs in. Hey. I'll see you, bro. What are, what are you doing? Back. Later, Humps. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. I'll see you guys in the morning. Thanks for coming on. All right. No problem. Hey, Justin. So uh, what are you doing here this weekend? You got that fancy camera. Ah, you do yeah. have a very fancy camera. It's not fancy. It's, it's all actually, it's all that stuff out in front of the lens, man. Yeah. It just makes it look very sophisticated. It's just all the extra crap. Yeah, yeah I, I just got it down here. Um, I was actually just looking for something to shoulder mount because I'm really weak, <clears throat> and I don't like holding the camera up. I get tired easy. Yeah, it makes my shoulders sore. So, so are you just a weightlifter now? For right now. That's all I'm seeing online is That's weightlifting. That's right. Yeah. Just for right now. I see yeah. weight overhead. Yeah. Um, quest to 275k.blogspot.com. I'm trying to – that's my total that I'm trying to get to. When I get to that, I'm actually going to call up Max and make a go at regionals next year. Oh, wow. Nice. So that's the plan. I like that. I like that whole mm-hmm. having, like, a strength goal first, you know, meet Justin, that. Uh, are you parked right in the Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Dude, like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Really just blocking the whole driveway. Yeah. I was just – I tried to actually park on top of the car. <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't work. All right. All right. All right. That's just blocking him, man. We'll shut down the show without you all. <laughs> car block. <laughs> Unless Shana wants on. We can just keep this going forever. You want to have a seat? You with the purple hair. The unicorn. Oh, cooking on the stove. Oh, well. I will shut it down. All right, guys. Doug.
Got anything you want to promote? I do. We have a couple of weightlifting seminars coming out here pretty soon. Zach Critch seminar should be out towards the end of the month. Uh, and we just filmed another seminar w- with uh, Justin Thacker, which was, was, was super comprehensive. Zach's seminar was very cool. It was very straightforward, very to the point. If you're an athlete that just wants to improve your weightlifting and you want to just know specifically what to do, then Zach's seminar is, is awesome. Uh, if you're a coach and you want to know anything and everything there is to know about weightlifting, uh, then Justin Thacker's, Thacker's seminar is more like a course. It's like really everything you'd ever want to know about weightlifting. So uh, if you want to improve your weightlifting, both Zach Critch and Justin Thacker have some awesome seminars that should be here uh, available in the shop very soon. Yeah, Thack- Thacker's will be coming out sometime in maybe August or September. It'll be a little but while. Zach's will be um, available at the end of this month. So, um, And, uh, yeah, make sure you go um, to Facebook, our Facebook page, hit the like button, follow us on Twitter at Barbell Shrug. And uh, go and sign up for the newsletter. Um, it'll make your life better, I promise. You get, you get your uh, your video top seven snatch mistakes that you're probably making, and Mike shows you how to fix them when you That's sign right. up for the newsletter. That's right. You it's get, a cool little bonus feature. People like that video. That video's the shit. I, I, hear, I hear good things. Um, yeah, real quick, too, if you're buying Progenix, use the promo code SHRUG, and you get 10% off. Support the show. S-H-R-U-G.